Selamat pagi, another day, another ringgit. Let's dress up in three, two, one. All white everything, let's go. I know guys, it's not even 11 a.m. and I am having this already. Like, filet of, uh, filet of fish, fries, and uh, McFreeze. Apparently a frozen Coca-Cola. Never had it before because we do not have it over there in Switzerland. But hey, today I got very exciting news because today I got one thing which is so hard to find in the whole town. But here in New Central there is a place where you can get it. It's my touch and go card. Hell yeah. And with this one you have to pay the tolls, the parking and you can also pay with that your public transport as well. And that's a card every Malaysian, at least in the peninsula, needs. And it's actually incredible how hard to come by it is. Like, you can't even get it at the places where it is actually said that you can get them. Like at Watson's or at KK Supermart. So, I don't know, it is what it is. And now let's try this thing out. I wanted to drink first of all because uh, as you can see, no straws, not like in Switzerland, and I'm wondering how this McFreeze tastes like. Oh my god. It's so delicious. And I suppose wherever you want to go, the food looks almost the same as everywhere else. Just as usual, thank you Dietrich for being my executive producer and if you my dear viewer out there would like to become one too, check out the first link in the description down below, it will lead you to my Patreon page. A few hours after my ridiculously cheap meal in McDonald's, I made my way to meet a friend at the National Museum AK Museum Negara. The entrance fee to get in there is usually 5 ringgit for a non-Malaysian, but for some reason I had to pay only 2 ringgit, which is the reduced fee for Malaysians. Honestly, I don't know why I paid less, but probably the ticket seller thought that I am Malaysian, which of course is not true. Anyway, the museum features four different rooms with various stages of Malaysia's history. Starting off with the early history, Malaysia is being shown as a country how it developed all the way into the early mankind with prehistoric population, including the ancient human from Perak. In the second room, the history is about the Malay kingdoms. From various requisites across the whole era, such as the ancient swords called Keris, you can also see how the people groups emerged, such as the Peranakan Chinese community settling in Malacca and the arrival of Arab traders bringing the Islam to Malaysia. The third room is about the colonial era, where various empires got onto Malaysian shores. It started off with the Portuguese coming to Malacca, then the resistance to the Dutch people, and then finishing with the arrival of the British. The Portuguese left quite a bit of a legacy in Malaysia, especially bringing the culture, religion and language to the region, which influenced also the local people and the Malay language as a whole. Even today there is a significant amount of vocabulary in Malay which features words of Portuguese origin. Also the community of Eurasians is to a large part of Portuguese descent as well. I didn't manage to visit Melaka myself on this trip, but just seeing this huge replica gate, I had kind of a feeling being there myself. The fourth room has to do with the contemporary period of the Malaysian history. The Independence Day on the 31st of August 1957, where the first Prime Minister Tunku Abdul Rahman proclaimed the independence from the British Empire, plays until this day a huge role. There it is also shown that Malaysia is a constitutional monarchy, with nine different sultans rotating every five years the seat as the head of the federation which is unique to this world. In general, Malaysia got 13 states, of those 9 being sultanates, and 3 federal territories. To me, this was rather redundant to see, because thanks to COVID-19, I had enough time before coming to Malaysia to look up Malaysia's history. For a guy who is a huge car lover and whose interest in Malaysia got sparked by its cars, it was a fulfilling moment to see the first national car, aka the Proton Saga. 
This is a rebadged Mitsubishi Lancer Fiore and was launched on the 18th of April in 1985. Proton itself is a creation of the former Prime Minister Tun Mahathir Mohammad, who is still being seen driving in Protons around. Originally rebadging Mitsubishi cars, Proton started to make in-house designed and developed cars with their own engines in the early 2000s. The own design peaked in 2016 with the launch of the Proton Suprema S, a great looking hatchback which unfortunately suffered from not getting enough love from the public, especially for being the best indigenous developed car until today. Was the museum worth it? Well, for the price you pay and what it offers, it is obviously a no-brainer and a must-go, especially if you want to get to know the place better without having the previous knowledge like I had. It is at least a lot more worthwhile than going to Petaling Street. It is well known as the Chinatown, but in practice most vendors there aren't Chinese and the place in general is overpriced. So apart from a little stroll, there is nothing much to do. Anyway, I hope you don't mind that the video was a shorter one, but I can tell you the next one is going to come very soon. Stay tuned and I hope to see you the next time. Ciao!